Please welcome Len Yugarenko. Thank you very much, Bob, and good morning to you all. As Bob said, I just came back from the States about well, six months back. So I had to learn to speak American while I was down there. And if I say project, I really mean project. And if I say process, I really mean process. I was invited by the conference organizers to respond to Canada's State of Stewardship Report on behalf of the non-governmental organizations. And I thank them for that. Before I do that, I'm going to say a few words about one of my favorite organizations, Wildlife Habitat Canada. We're a national nonprofit charitable organization, as Bob said, and we're celebrating our 25th anniversary this year. Over the years, we've dedicated over $57 million to the conservation, restoration, and enhancement of wildlife habitat. But more importantly, our grants have helped to leverage on average over five times that amount. And I'll give you an example. This past year, 2008-2009, we awarded about $1.2 million in grants. That money leveraged $9.9 million worth of more money across Canada to go into the conservation of wildlife habitat. And most of the funds that we receive are from the sale of the wildlife cons habitat conservation stamp, which is purchased by hunters to validate their migratory bird hunting permit. And each of you, I think, received a pamphlet in your little goodie bag when you registered, which talks about our stamp and print program, so I'll go on with that. We've worked for 25 years in ways that differ from most other non-governmental organizations, and we've got extensive experience working on behalf of others. We've been instrumental in the conservation stewardship sector in Canada, and we've always been a proponent of conservation stewardship. So we're pleased to see that stewardship now has become a component of operations in most national non-government organizations. We have funded innovative stewardship initiatives such as the Municipal Stewardship Programs in Newfoundland and Labrador, the Ontario Wetland Habitat Fund, the establishment of the Quebec Provincial Habitat Stamp and Project Funding Program, and closer to home here, the Cows and Fish Program in Alberta, as well as the Pacific Estuary Conservation Program. We were an earlier innovator in stewardship, exemplified by such initi initiatives as the National Workshop on Backyard Stewardship. We have been a significant funder of the four national stewardship conferences. Our logo is just up there under the little gold thing. We, recognized, we are recognized as a proven partnership organization that has refrained from competing for funds with the project implementation partners. We've effectively linked the conservation community with agricultural and forestry agencies and interest by seeking innovative sustainable development approaches to landscape management. And we've been a national voice focused on landscape stewardship beyond the parameters of species management. We've been an important contributor to Canada's stewardship agenda, as well as conducting a series of national surveys in cooperation with Environics to assess farmers, ranchers, and rural landowners' attitudes towards stewardship objectives. So in preparation for this presentation, we asked the Centre for Environmental Stewardship and Conservation, who actually prepared the two reports that accompany this conference, to conduct a broad consultation of the conservation community to get a sense of support for the recommendations found in the State of Stewardship in Canada report. And I'll follow Mr. Manning's lead, and when I say report, that's what I mean. They conducted over 50 national, regional, and or provincially based non-government conservation organizations. Sorry, they contacted them. And they also reviewed comments from the Stewardship Conference online forum. The Center for Environmental Stewardship and conservation also weighed recommendations enclosed in the State of Stewardship in Canada report against the March 2009 survey conducted by the Canadian Environmental Network that solicited environmental, non-governmental organizations' views on the progress, challenges, lessons learned, and future biodiversity priorities. The top three challenges cited by the 128 respondents to that survey were lack of funding and political will and awareness, which align closely with the recommendations held in the report. The following are the observations on the report's recommendations from the non-governmental organizations. First, there seemed to be little disagreement that the recommendations are reasonable, sufficiently clear, and represent enduring top-of-mind concerns. 
Second, despite acknowledgement that progress in support of stewardship in selected areas has been made, there continues to be concern, which in some instances approaches frustration, that many of the obstacles to strengthening stewardship identified since the first stewardship conference in 2000 continue to be hurdles today. Notable was the, was the need for leadership at the national level, the lack of ongoing commitment to broad-based stewardship, and the need for new stewardship funding. Third, front of mind issues vary depending upon what jurisdiction the respondent represented. Local conservation organizations were focused on getting work done on the ground and keeping their doors open. They emphasized that new funding should be place-based and in support of actions that meet grassroots, grassroots needs. In some cases, such as the community of land trusts, there were contrasting views on the importance of stewardship to their business functions. Provincial organizations had varying views on stewardship priorities, possibly attributable to the percentage of private and public land ownership by province. Organizations with broad-based national interest placed attention on greater integration of programs and expressed the greatest interest in the creation of a coalition as a means for building a more supportive environment for stewardship. In the non-government conservation community, we each have a piece of the stewardship puzzle that reflects our organization's individual visions. The lack of a comprehensive, integrated, and blended vision is a deterrent to moving beyond random acts of conservation stewardship. We need to bring all of the pieces together in a manner that is coherent, complementary, and value added. There appears to be a widespread general support in the national non-government conservation community for the tone and focus of all six of the recommendations in the report. And it has been recommended that they be pursued on the national scale. Specific observations include, there is little need to debate the definition of stewardship, whereas simple recognition that stewardship is based on a wide set of intentions is sufficient for progress. In other words, if one agrees you are similar within a family of resemblances, you can act in a coalition mode. Some have suggested that the development of a national 10-year stewardship plan from 2010 to 2020 would be of great benefit by including measurable targets for the suite of actions it might envisage, envisage and could be a common vision to help integrate programs and reduce duplication. The plan, if it is to promote integration, should demonstrate that it will really grow the pie and not cut off other opportunities or isolate smaller groups. New funds will be required to undertake these recommendations, yet they must be tied to current major policy drivers such as climate change adaptation, water conservation, biodiversity, and protecting the habitat of species at risk. It would be valuable for the plan to incorporate several economic studies to demonstrate the value of goods and services provided by stewardship activities, such as the restoration of wetlands, in order to justify the need. It goes back to some of the stuff that Mr. Manning was talking about. We will also need to create a, pol a political support for stewardship and secure a national political champion. We need to consider establishing a national stewardship coordinating body, for example, a secretariat, that is dedicated to advancing interconference activities, supporting the advancement of stewardship tools in Canada, such as incentives for landowners, taxation assistance, <coughs> excuse me, and technical support, facilitating an interagency writing team in the Secretariat for the preparation of the 2010-2020 plan, and seek funding support for the initial phases of the plan starting in 2010 from all logical sources. Thank you.